Today's video is brought to you in part by Wondershare's Dr. Phone. Having a lock screen for your smart device is a must in today's world, but with different pins and patterns to remember, it can be easy to forget the right passcode to get into your device. Dr. Phone Unlock for Android removes the hassle of trying to unlock your device without a password, and all in just five minutes. Dr. Phone can also remove four types of Android lock screens, patterns, fingerprints, pins, and passwords. So no matter what lock screen your Android device has, you won't have to worry about that with Dr. Phone. And best of all, you don't have to be a tech wizard to use Dr. Phone either. With simple and easy to follow on-screen instructions, anyone can unlock their Android device in just minutes. So if you forgot your passcode, or maybe just got a secondhand Android device with a lock screen, let Dr. Phone take the stress out of getting your device unlocked without losing any data. Most of my friends, and I know that many of you guys, my viewers, are really hardcore gamers. And if you had the money, you would always invest in the most equipment, the most expensive equipment, and the best equipment you could get your hands on. And that means getting two cards either to run in SLI or to run in Crossfire. Now, for people out there who absolutely don't know what this is, this is taking two cards of the same type, meaning that you take, you know, an RTX 2080 Ti, you match it up with a matching card, you take a Vega 64, you match it up with another card. This is for the best performance. What this does is it enables both cards to work together to create a better score on your games. Basically, you know, doubling your frame rates, making things look better, all this type of stuff. But here's the real thing. Back in the day, when I was doing a lot of gaming, I, do, I did a lot more gaming really when I was younger than I do now. I still game a little bit, but I used to be really into it. And I always made sure that I had two cards, you know, running an SLI or Crossfire because, hey, when it worked, it just worked great. And back in the day, there were many games that were being released for SLI. I mean, pretty much, I would say 10 years ago, you were seeing probably three in five games that had SLI support. Well, I went to the NVIDIA site this morning, I started checking things out, and there's 31 pages of games that support SLI. Okay, 31 page, that's quite a lot of games. You'd think, you know, in the long run, since they've been around, they're gonna have a, you know, a, basically a shit ton of games that support SLI. But here's the thing. The recent games that have been coming out, I feel there's just really not that many games that are even coming out now that actually support SLI. I mean, yeah, there's Shadow of the Tomb Raider, there's Division, there's a few more. I'll have a link down below if you guys want to check it out. But the real drawback to this to me, and it kind of feels to me like SLI, even though NVIDIA still has it there, it doesn't feel to me like NVIDIA is pushing the agenda with the people that are developing games to have SLI as one of the features incorporated into the programming of the game. I mean, sure, there are a couple of games out there that support it. But we're talking about, you know, if you want one of the newest cards, the RTX cards out there, you know, you're going to be spending six or seven hundred dollars per card. That's at the minimum, the entry level. We haven't seen the 2070. I'm sure it'll probably be priced at four or $500 still, and there's still, you're looking at almost $1,000 for two cards. Okay, so that's a big investment, two cards. And a lot of people complain about the micro stuttering and all this other stuff. And micro stuttering is basically when you're looking at your game, you see your game just all of a sudden do something really just weird and wacky all of a sudden, just out of phase or out of focus. And it's because the two cards aren't totally connected and working together as well. Now, NVIDIA has released a brand new type of SLI through their NVLink. It's supposed to bring double the bandwidth, all kinds of great stuff, but that's all well and good. That's cool. Thumbs up. For all those people who have older games and stuff, that'll be, hey, really good stuff. If you're a person who has a lot of old games and a huge lot of old titles and you want to be playing all those titles in SLI, that's a really cool thing. But if you're someone who's just now coming into the market and building up your computer, most likely you're not going to be going and buying games from five and six years ago to put inside of your collection. You're probably just not. I mean, let's just face it. I mean, when you go buy, you know, stuff, you're usually trying to buy the latest stuff. When you go out and you buy like musical equipment or stereo, you don't go buy stereo equipment usually from 10 years ago unless you're just really desperate and trying to start off. You're buying the latest stuff. And seeing 
that the options for SLI are getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer, it seems to me. Right now, SLI kind of seems like a dead horse altogether. I mean, I don't know if SLI is dying altogether because we have seen a few games that are coming out. But overall, for the cost investment that you're going to have to put into doing something like this, I just don't see it being a viable thing for anybody coming into the market right now buying cards to buy two cards and do them in SLI. Now, obviously, we're going to be bringing you the SLI scores of all these cards, and we're going to admit all of the games that don't support SLI. In the past, we just tested a bunch of games and we saw that, okay, some games didn't support it. We're not even gonna waste our time. We're only going to do the games that we see support SLI and we'll bring those scores to you. We'll try to, we'll try to get 15 to 20 of those games out there if you can. It takes a lot of time to get all that shit together, but we'll try to get together so you guys can actually see how much SLI performance is, you know, compared to some of the older games, to some of the newer games, to see that, you know, for people out there, if you have like an older car, like you have a 970 or you have a 10, 70 and you want to jump into another card you know that might be something that's you know sort of feasible but for these brand new cards that are out there it almost seems insane to me to go out and spend okay let's just say you want to get two founders edition rtx 28 ti's you're going to be spending what upwards of 2500 dollars after tax and stuff in some countries way more than that because of their import duties so we're talking about three thousand dollars for an investment for a card that's only going to play about four or five games better it makes absolutely, totally, totally no sense. And I was flabbergasted. I actually sent an email, you know, to the guys over at NVIDIA, you know, so they could talk to me and see, you know, what games they were actually doing. And if in the future they were planning on, you know, getting, you know, more, you know, with the developers again and doing this, but I'm uh, not really getting any answers. And to me, with the decline that I've seen in SLI, it's kind of crazy that they're coming up with this new NVLink. I, maybe maybe there'll be some programs and stuff uh, on the professional type aspect thing or something that's gonna be taking advantage of that we don't really know just yet. But uh, for right now, NVLink, it sounds great on paper. Obviously, I think Jay's Two Cents did some did some testing. The numbers were probably really good where, 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 you know, where it actually worked. I'm sure we're gonna see the same exact thing. But the bottom line comes down to this. If you're only going to be playing the latest games. That's what you're into. There's no reason to invest in two cards in SLI, in my opinion, whatsoever. I think it's a complete waste of money. If you're going to just invest and you've got the money, just buy yourself the absolute best card you can get your hands on. Stick with that one card and just forget about all the stuff, all the problems that gets associated with that. Now, there is other things that you can do, though, other than SLI. You can take one really good card and you can take one smaller generation card and you can dedicate that other card strictly to phys x which means it'll take all the phys x properties now all the phys x stuff is really the stuff that makes the game look realistic right but it doesn't really take a whole you know it doesn't take another you know 2080 ti just to do phys x you could get a 2080 or you get yourself a 1080 ti and get yourself a lower end card and dedicate that card strictly for the phys x aspect of things and still get better performance than you're getting with a single card so you don't even really have to do sli you can use a lower end card and you can see it if you look inside of your driver base that it gives you the option of choosing a card dedicated to phys x you choose that card dedicated to phys x with your other card you're going to get better performance i think all the way around than investing the money in two cards and doing SLI at this point. The only reason to do SLI, in my opinion, right now, is if you're a person, you've been gaming for years and years and years. You have a system and you have all those games on there, everything's running great, you wanna be able to play all those games in SLI and get that performance, then yeah, for you, that's a good investment. But for anybody who's just jumping in the game, save your money. If you want to get better performance, buy one dedicated, really good graphics card, buy a lower level card, dedicate that card to PhysX, and I guarantee you, your gaming experience will be totally awesome. I'm Elric. You guys have been watching Tech of Tomorrow. Give me your opinions down below. I think many people already consider SLI a completely dead horse, but obviously, with NVIDIA still, you know, advancing the technology, Hopefully something's going to change, but who knows? If you want to know how many games were actually totally supported by SLI, I'll have a link down below where you can check it out. There's actually 31 pages of games, but as far as the newer games, recent releases, it's a really shallow water.